Welcome back to my studio, and today we're going to be taking a second look at iPhone apps for light meters and how they work in low light conditions. When I did my video a year ago about different apps that can be used for light meters, I was using an iPhone 6. Now this is a little bit of an outdated camera and phone now, so I have an iPhone 12. And I wanted to see if the hardware difference makes a uh, better impression for light meter readings in low light, because that's one of the biggest concerns I heard in the comments was low light readings were not consistent or they were definitely way off. And so I, I admit, I didn't check that. I only did middle of the day, late afternoon, and compared sunlight. So we're going to look at how our actual light meter works in low light conditions. And then we're going to compare with an iPhone 12 and the original six that I used before. We're going to use just one app this time. The previous video showed that the apps were pretty much consistent across the board. The user interface was the biggest difference. So we're gonna stick with one app and we're just gonna check low light performance and see if we get better performance from one or both of these phones than we expect. So let's move everything over to my work table and get set up for that. Here we have everything set up. I've got, of course, my dedicated Siconic light meter. I've got the iPhone 6 that I used on the first video, and now an iPhone 12. So uh, I went out in the sun, checked all three against one another, along with my little diffusion attachment, which I'll go ahead and put on now. And we're going to read all these in incident today. Uh, we may do this in reflective as well with a gray card behind because I do also have a uh, little light meter that is reflected only. So we may, uh, we may do that depending on how this goes. The app I'm going to use for this is Light Meter Pro. No, it's not free. It's $4, I believe. And the reason why I'm using it is because of the interface. It's a good user interface and it's easy for us to see what's happening. As we saw in the first video from last year, they're all going to give about the same results uh, from one app to another. They're just mostly user interface differences. So that's why we're using the Light Meter Pro today. Really what we're doing is we're checking the hardware differences here. So let's go ahead and read this. We've got this Light Meter. Let's read this one first. I'm gonna put it in the way just to make sure I get a good middle reading. Okay, and we're at a 15th of a second, 5.6 and a third. All of these are set to ISO 100. Let's go ahead and read this one. And we are at 15th of a second at 5.6 and two thirds. So a little bit different. We are at one third of a stop different. The light, by the way, is uh, one of my GVM 880 light panels, and I'm using a large round soft box on it, and it's currently at 100% at 5500K. And take a reading. Okay, already we can see we are a bit different. So instead of 15th of a second at 5.6 and one third, we're at 15th of a second at F4 and a third. So the older phone is a full stop off from the light meter. Let's go ahead and lower the light by a full stop. So I wanna turn this down to 50%.
Let's go ahead and try a reflective setting here. Uh, I've got my reflective meter, I've got my spot meter. Uh, spot meter actually in this close of quarters may not give us a reliable reading just because there's going to be such a difference between the top and the bottom of the card. But we'll try it. We'll see if we can get in the ballpark. First things first, I've got both of these phones uh, centered on the gray card and set to the reflective mode. I've got my little light meter here. This is just a standard reflective meter. It works by the needle. Oops. Ha. Uh, robust. It works by the needle moving relative to the amount of light. And you turn the dial and just get the needle centered to the fork, or rather the fork over the needle. And then that gives you your settings here. So let's read the gray card. Okay, I am reading pretty much exactly at 15th of a second at 5.6. And, yep, I'm at 100. Okay, so let's read these and see what we get. 5.6 at a 15th. Let's focus here. So this one is reading the same as the light meter. And this one is not. It's two-thirds of a stop off, which we saw earlier. Uh, I'm going to try this with my spot meter. Uh, it doesn't really do very well in a situation like this because it's such a small area that any variation from the top of the gray card to the bottom, if I don't hit the exact same spot, could get a different reading. Okay, I am getting 5.6 at 15th. So we are in agreement between my two actual standard light meters and the iPhone 12. The 6th, no, it's not accurate. It's a little bit off. But let's see if it is consistently off because you can always fudge by changing the film speed here to make a match. So let's go ahead and cut it down a full stop. this point my light meter can't read it let's try this one
All right, and those are our results. Right now, I was willing to say or theorize that low light performance was pretty terrible with the iPhone 6, but better with the 12. And right now, I'm going to say I was incorrect. I'm actually getting fairly close readings at low light, and they are pretty on par with a good quality dedicated light meter, even a cheap quality dedicated light meter. The front facing camera with the diffuser shows that I am getting a more consistent correct answer with the newer phone. The old phone consistently off so it can be adjusted by changing the ISO settings on the app. But you would have to have a light meter to uh, to do that with or go through uh, film speed testing and, and whatnot in your own system. You could certainly do that and get this to work just fine. Is it going to be perfect? No, but you're going to be within a third of a stop. And within a third of a stop is perfectly reasonable. Um, err on the side of caution and just overexpose a third of that stop if you need to. All right, that's going to do it. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for watching.